Bonjour. Здравейте. Hello. Hi. And it's uh, another welcome. garden video. Like I guess you can't really see it, but you've got like um, a group of cows in the background. Lovely stuff. A group? A patch? Uh, I don't know. This thing with the uh, groups of animals are really Come a struggle. Below. Okay, so this is trip to the library part two. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking about these short stories by Dino Buzzati. It's a bilingual book in French and Italian. Yeah. The original is Italian. It's called Dus Novel or Dodici Racconti. And That's nice. we chose one called Non è mai finita or San è jamais fini. Mm -hmm. It is all of them are kind of witty and interesting. But we, we chose this one. So let us read several paragraphs from it so you get the basic idea. We'll start from the very beginning. Sure. Uh, should I start with Italian? Yeah, go for it. A questo mondo non è mai finita, disse la signora Amelia Britz. Stia un po' a sentire. Io sono siciliana, nata in un povero paesello sospeso tra le rupi in cima a una montagna. Di lassù si vede il mare e il paesaggio è un paradiso, ma per il resto si è rimasti indietro di due secoli. Il nome lasci perdere. I miei compaesani sono gente così ombrosa. E forse meglio sorvolare. Lo chiamerò convenzionalmente Castellizzo. Sounds very nice. Yeah, it's a beautiful language. Yeah. <laughs> en ce monde, ça n'est jamais fini, dit ma, euh, Madame Amelia Brise. Écoutez un peu, je suis sicilienne, née dans un pauvre petit village, perché parmi les rochers, en haut d'une montagne. De là-haut, on voit la mer, et le paysage est un paradis. Mais pour le reste, on est resté en arrière de deux siècles. Son nom ah, Laissez tomber. Les gens de mon village sont si susceptibles. Glissons, cela vaut mieux peut-être. Je l'appellerai, par convention, uh, Castellizzo. That's right. Thank you. So, I will notice first something that's in the title itself. Non è mai finita. It's mm. the feminine is used to mean just in general. It's just, it never finishes, mm. you know. And if you want to say something uh, general, it's usually the sa. Or you could actually say uh, on as well, like mm -hmm. it, it indicates something neutral. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like uh, yeah. On, a, on, a, on finira jamais or something like that. You could, you could potentially say, say something like that as well. Yes. In Italian, if you say mm. finito, mm. that could be just implied like this event or this thing, but some kind of small thing, really. If you want to really go for the general, it would be the feminine. Mm. I see. And also, like, you know, I've told you how I feel like in terms of grammar, Itali Italian is really the one that comes closest to French. Mm. For example, look at these two sentences. The structure is just like so much the same. Uh, well, 90% at least. Io sono siciliana, nata in un povero paesello sospeso tra le rupi in cima a una montagna. And this one. Je suis sicilienne, née dans, une, dans un pauvre petit village, perché parmi les rochers, en haut d'une montagne. You, yeah. can, you can sense that, Yeah, right? definitely. <laughs> okay, so, uh, this woman was born in a small village um, in uh, Sicily, and she dreamt of going to the nearby town, mm. where she ended up going as a teenager to study. And here's what happens then. Credetti di impazzire dalla gioia, ma dopo un mese che ero a Trapani già ascoltavo rapita ciò che raccontavano i forestieri giunti da città molto più grandi. Mi sembravano di razza diversa. Ah, povera Trapani, come eri piccola e squallida al confronto. Palermo, Messina... Quella si era civiltà sul serio. Mm, so that's interesting. You have like squalid, just like in English, squalido. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Like, uh, I don't think French we... French miserable. Yeah, miserable is not a... Uh, yeah, just yeah. Uh, checking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it's here, right? Yeah, the, the last paragraph. Je crus devenir folle de joie, mais au bout d'un mois que je me trouvais à Trapani... Trapani, pardon. 
J'écoutais déjà avec ravissement ce que racontaient les étrangers venus de villes beaucoup plus grandes. Ils me semblaient d'une autre race. Ah, pauvre Trapani, comme tu étais petite et misérable en comparaison. Palerme. Uh, that's the French way of saying Palerme. Uh, Messine. We, we really tend to kind of franchise uh, like the name of places, like, uh, like uh, Rome, uh, let's say, uh, La Sicile, you know, mm -hmm, like uh, mm -hmm. pretty much like all Italian, uh, specific In Bulgarian, Italian names. In Bulgarian, we would usually just say the, mm. the Italian because it fits in terms of, you know, like the ending vowels, for example, mm. it kind of... It seems yeah. to fit the grammar, mm -hmm. the logic of the language. And the the same with uh, German. Like, let's say uh, German, you've got like uh, Freiburg, uh, Fribourg, like uh, another place like that. Anyways, sorry. Uh, Palerme, Messine. Voilà où était la vraie civilisation. Here too, you can tell, like, I find it really amusing because it's like really long sentences, yet the exact same structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for example, here. Ma dopo un mese che ero a Trapani, già ascoltavo rapita ciò che raccontavano i forestieri giunti da città molto più grandi. And by the way, I'm talking about grammar, mostly, like, yeah. the, you know, mm. not, not necessarily the vocabulary. Yeah. Like this one. Mais au bout d'un mois que je me trouvais à, à Trapani, j'écoutais déjà avec ravissement ce que racontaient les étrangers venus de villes beaucoup plus grandes. Okay, so now she's there mm. in the nearby town that's big compared to her village, but she wants to go to Palermo and Messina, mm. which are bigger Sicilian uh, towns. Yeah. And she ends up going there, of course, in mm. Messina, if I'm not mistaken. She marries a baron, mm. so they're wealthy. <laughs> and now she really wants to go to Rome. Yeah. Uh, actually, in terms of uh, geography, like uh, Sicily is really quite uh, south of Italy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you're going back to Rome, it's like basically she's going up north. But yeah. <laughs> per farla breve, cominciai a sognare Roma. Messina ormai mi sembrava un buco da non poterci respirare più. Dai e dai, mio marito si decise. Tanto non li mancavano. I quattrini traslocamo nella capitale. Bref, je commençais à rêver de Rome. Messine, désormais, me semblait un trou où il n'était plus possible de respirer. J'insistais euh, tant que mon mari se décida. D'ailleurs, il ne manquait pas d'argent. Nous, euh, nous nous transférâmes dans la capitale. Nous transférâmes. <rire> I noticed that uh, in Italian, the capital is with uh, capital C. Yeah. And I wonder if it's because it's the capital of Italy, you know? Um, the way it's very possible, like as mm -hmm. you can see in French, uh, there isn't one. Yes, exactly, yeah. because it's not the capital for mm, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so, I'll note once again, per farla breve, to make it literally, to make her brief. Mm. Uh, again, to make it general, it has to be the feminine. Mm. But in French, it's actually something that really merits, uh, mm. like its quality coincides with its meaning. Bref. Bref, briefly. Uh, you could say that like, pour faire bref, or pour abréger, mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. yeah. But you really use that bref. a lot. Yeah. Bref. Enfin bref, <laughs> very often. <Yeah. laughs> and this expression too in Italian is kind of cool and mm. uh, feels um, economical. Mm. Da non poterci respirare più, like to the point of not being able to breathe anymore. Yeah. Uh, because we have two infinitives. Poterci respirare, mm. French, où il n'était plus possible de respirer. It's mm. kind of a bit more wordy. Yeah, French tends to be more wordy, like uh, when it comes to. We really like uh, complex grammatical structures, they're very important, like uh, compared to. Uh, yeah, maybe Italian and Spanish, like. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So the lady, Amelia, right? Yep. Amelia is, of course, she ends up in Rome soon afterwards, uh, but then she wants to go to uh, Paris and London. Ah, I'm kind of curious, how do you let's say, how do you say Paris? Paris, Parigi. Parigi, okay, well, could it come from the, your, you know, you write it Paris, but you say Paris, mm -hmm. could it come from there? It could, Yeah. it could. Okay. <laughs> 
Uh, so, and she travels all these places. It even starts kind of being briefer and briefer. She goes to Paris and London. They're kind of put at the same level. Mm. But then she feels like people there actually, their home is New York and the most refined people come from New York to just spend time there. Mm. So she goes to New York too. And eventually she is in New York. Maybe she moves somewhere else in the United States. And then there is a little bit of a twist. I don't know if it's a twist or a progression. It's like both. Mm, not necessarily. <laughs> if you read like all those uh, Hemingway books and like the time of like the, um, what do you call that? The early 20th century novels, like with their crazy experience, uh, like crazy trips to uh, mm -hmm. uh, like remote places. Like it would make sense. I may la societe. Uh, I forgot what language I was speaking, sorry. No La società più filtrata ed esigente ebbe a noia il Pacifico e i deserti. Prese l'aereo verso est, ritornò alla vecchia stanca Europa. Non già per infognarsi nella volgarità di Londra o di Parigi, ma che andava in cerca di erimi ed esili di conventi, di ruderi e rovine. E io dietro. Hélas, la société la plus sélecte et la plus euh, exigeante. I'm pretty sure select uh, comes directly from, uh, from English. Like, so, mm. yeah, you have the same notion of selection, but we wouldn't say it like that. Like, select okay. is uh, plus exigeante, cela ça du Pacifique et des déserts. Elle prit l'avion vers l'Est, retourna vers la vieille Europe fatiguée. Non pas, certes, pour se vautrer dans la vulgarité de Londres ou de Paris, allons donc. Elle allait à la recherche d'ermitage de re et de retraite, de couvents, de décombres et de ruines. Et moi, je suis. All right. So, yeah, I'll just note, I didn't know the uh, Alas word. Mm. Aime. It's yeah. cool, I'll try to remember it. Mm. I also like maqué as one word. Like, mm. what are you talking about? Like, of course not, mm. you know, like a strong... Opposition in French, it's yeah. allons donc. Allons donc. Would you say it fits? Uh, yeah, it fits well. Like it's slightly old-fashioned. When was this book written? Actually, I'm. Uh, I, uh, I saw that uh, the author lived in the 20th century. Mm. Um, well, it what fits, exactly? It fits with this feeling of like uh, like the U.S. Uh, being like really the center of the world at that uh, like at that time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yes, but mm. still, it's really. Uh, Completely relatable. Like yeah. it, it feels exactly this way. For example, being in a village, mm. is it a bit old-fashioned, or is it a bit like before its time? Like you know, already some people work from home and they commute only when needed. Mm. Like I had a friend in Bulgaria yeah. who lives in a small village near Sofia. So mm. I was really torn between thinking. Oh, well, she's a bit old-fashioned living there, and wow, she's like so fashionable. Like you know, like working she online. she grows working mm. online, doing yeah. her like growing her own food. That because mm. that's you know bio, you know uh, organic food. Yeah, that's really like that feels more modern than anything. Depends what you consider modern. Like uh, it can be seen as a matter of uh, I wouldn't say fashion, but. It's logical with like the modern, uh, let's say, ecological concerns that we mm -hmm. use not to have uh, <laughs> for quite a while. Um, but basically, we talked a bit about this book. Like I've uh, read the, the the French version of it, and the main notion that I get is like this lady really wanted to travel the world, but this notion was like because when she was a kid, she was uh, looking at the at, at a window and like looking at the world like looking at lights of uh, life that is going on in the distance and like wanting to be there wanting to travel like to 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 see this place with really the, some sort of magic and in my humble opinion it's mainly like when you're an adult you're trying to basically go, go back to this uh, childhood dreams like even beyond this notion of uh, actually like traveling it's like really you're trying to reach your like kind of Child, child passion, like uh, so. Yeah, that's yeah, absolutely. I guess and that's how I would see it. As we well. didn't actually show the very end, but 
she returns back to her home village. Uh, we didn't even say that. Yeah. And yeah. again, everything just ends where it started. And she, again, she's she looking out the window again. and yeah. dreaming. <laughs> yeah, dreamingly. So, <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So, I'm thinking me too when I was a kid, around maybe 10, and mm. I would go to the center of Sofia and... Mm when it will be dark and I just see like some lights and I would imagine this is London, London uh, must be so great. And I would go to some shops where they sell like cassettes, yeah. you know, music mm. cassettes. And then there was this guy I knew who was bringing magazines from England so I could buy OK and Hello magazine. There mm. were pictures of Robbie Williams in there. I was like, wow, that's so cool. And I imagine that if I, one day I went to London, I would feel this way. But actually, even though I felt great in London, I haven't felt as good as I mm. have felt as a child thinking this. Yeah. Interesting. Well, it's like... Uh, Look no. who's here. No. Uh, we, we're having a bit of a... Yeah, we have some guests here. Like. Let's see. This is our guest. So. Move, move the chair. Move the chair. Okay. This is Olaini. Yeah. Olaini is um. a... Ciao, ciao. And yeah, got to got to hit somewhere. But I absolutely I can't say it, but basically, yeah. But Lainey is our doggy. Yeah, and uh, kind of the operating uh, figure around here is the, uh, our son. So yeah. All right. So thank you guys. Thank you. You, really, <laughs> you can I can't see myself anymore. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you guys for joining. See, see you. Please see you subscribe. Later. Subscribe. Well, the YouTube stuff like subscribe, like, share, comment, all that. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye.